Welcome to the Scripps Multimedia Lounge. Thanks for being here today. Please join me now in welcoming Sarah Reap. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm excited to be able to bring you our Masco cabinetry research that we recently conducted. And the reason why we embarked on this research is we felt with the economy and the changes in the marketplace, we needed to look out into the marketplace and hear directly from the consumer. But here as a designer uh, working with you, we wanted to share those findings with you. And this is the beginning of our conversation over the next year and going forward in learning about the marketplace, the consumer, and then connecting us all to to the future of what's going to happen and what are the opportunities. And there are many that have been outlined through this recent study of Jen Shift. Life stages redefining the kitchen. So let's begin. The objective of this study was to actually twofold consider the term new normal. It's been a conversation point of the new normal, but what have been the effects and the output and has it really affected? And how has it affected the kitchen? So any shifts and changes. Also to provide architects and designers, our industry, insights and information to ensure you have the most relevant and up-to-date information for connecting and relating to the consumer. The new normal is causing a change in our marketplace. I'm sure most everyone's aware of that, and maybe perhaps you too have faced homes are not selling as quickly, foreclosures, homes still on the market. That's a negative, but there's also a positive aspect in that people are staying put and choosing to stay put and not make that movement. In fact, we were in a very quick movement pass before, and that will fuel remodeling. They will be looking at renovations as they shape their homes to match their lifestyle and generation needs. They will also be cooking at home more as they try to save money and tighten down a little bit. That's good for our business too. The kitchen is the heart of that experience. And then they may likely be having an older person joining them within that home, changing how they think about the home, the function, and the action and activities within the home design. Another good aspect that will improve and create opportunities for us as kitchen and bath designers and architects. So the new normal was confirmed, you know, it is changing how we live in the home and how we think about the home based on changes with the consumer and how they live in the marketplace. Our question was, how will the collision of these social, economic, and generational influences impact kitchen design? So pretty finite. We really wanted to focus in there because this is the heart of most of the, the business of that first remodeling point, and it's the hub of the house. The online survey, uh, commissioned by Masco Cabinetry, we're calling it Gin Shift 2011, was commissioned with Harris Interactive, a very top quality source for interactive research. And it was from February 28th to March 2nd. And it also included 1,027 US adult consumers. And homeowners 18 to 65 were consulted as that's the age group within the home as far as responding. And then we also incorporate, incorporated our Nielsen Spectra information into our study and activities and learning to cross-reference to make sure we dug deeper than just the one study. The discovery with Gen Shift 2011 does confirm some widely documented generational stereotypes. These conversations we have, we wanted to get to the bottom. Are they real or not? But it also uncovered some new ideas and things we hadn't thought about before. And so it's the comparison of the similarities and differences that brings action for all of this, making those next steps more productive. So let me share with you first an overview of the generations we worked with and communicated with. Basically, boomers, X and Y as consumer groups. The baby boomer, born between 46 and 66. Now keep in mind that these numbers are very um, flexible. You hear different ages here and there, but this generally conveys and connects about the generation. If you're slightly on the other side of that age, you might have tendencies for both, personally. The boomer is actually 76 million people in total, and they are now often more in charge of their parents' care and in the conversation and perhaps even the reality of that experience where previously that really wasn't an interest or a connection for the boomer. If anything, the me generation has been leading the charge and reinventing through so many paths of their lives, and now today it's more real than ever in, in care with their matures that you know, life is going to be different. And so they will look at their home 
differently because of this direct experience. And we'll be questioning and looking at aging in place. That's been a conversation in our industry for a while, but I think with the reality of connecting with the mature parent and those realities has brought it to light as their next reality. And they will be looking at how they will shape and change their home because as we found out, people are not moving as much, so they'll be staying in place and then looking at the modifications they need to make and move. This illustrates the subsegments within the boomer group. It can be anywhere from an independent single living at home by themselves, couples and established couples to empty nesters. And this generation is also having the boomerang kids in some cases come back home, adding an adult back into the house who's needing that transitional point. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So who is Gen X as a high level? born between 67 and 76, about 50 million people. It's smaller than boomers by about half. And they are in their work-life balance. They've always been good at that, but they're also in their busy child-rearing ages and experiences of shuttling kids and having sleepovers and really enjoying the family dynamics. And they are also in their peak earning years, just facing that and busy advancing their careers to um, meet their needs and dreams. And they also, this group, tend to look at their friends as influence. The Gen X group is the first latchkey generation that also experienced a high rate of divorce. And so they are determined to do life differently. And oftentimes, one works outside the home and is in home working. And they have that coverage and that trade off, trade up, trade down. They're not afraid to make tough decisions to make sure they keep that work life balance. Gen X subsegments, small families, it's all around the families, younger, bustling, older, independent singles, and then the established couple for Gen X. Gen Y, I'm actually leading a session tomorrow for the industry right down the hall at 9.30. I'll be focusing on Gen Y for an hour to cover this generation, which is fascinating how they're just entering our, sky, our, our scope and sight for reinventing our next boom for our industry. In a high-level summary, born between 1977 and 1993, You'll also hear them called in media millenniums or echo boomers. It's basically the same group. And that they're the largest consumer group ever. And they are changing the world. They are also taking the lead from their boomer parents and getting into the market with the opportunity of the new normal and the change of household costs and spending and stepping up and buying homes sooner. It used to be around 29, now it's 26. And with that interest in that home ownership, they're going to be out in the marketplace, but probably first online because they're highly wired and interested. And they reference and acknowledge third party endorsement from social aspects like uh, the LinkedIn, but to Facebook and those kind of technology tools. Product references will be key for Gen Y in that they will need to have a connection with the product, not just buy a product because of a brand name. All of you sitting here are actually a brand if you haven't thought of it before. So if you're in the consumer market, connecting with the consumer, think about your brand and your relevance with this consumer group and start to consider your conversation with this next generation. And that's what I'll do more tomorrow to dive deeper into that with some examples. The subsets with Gen Y is pretty small right now because that big bandwidth of timing, they're entering the market basically with young tra transitionals. Perhaps they're at home right now regrouping to go back out in the market looking for a job or they're also young startup families. This group is highly educated, more than any generation, and also from a woman's perspective, the new mom is going to be powerful. She's highly educated, oftentimes with professional degrees, where it used to be the uh, teacher, now it's the medical degree or the lawyer or the professional degree. And with all the tools and technology available to her, and he's going to be more collaborative and supportive, that kitchen and that home dynamics will be very exciting and a great opportunity for our industry. But they'll be more confident in how they do things. So we'll need to get in their heads and be available to engage with them because they're not going to want their mother's kitchen. They're going to want their kitchen. So in creating the Gen Shift study and the results, we started with some questions. This is an overview of the questions we asked. 
you know, do they expect that parents will be living with them, yes or no? Has that even come across them as a thought? Are there truly multi-generational households or is it a concept? Is it something we talk about but it's actually not happening? How about universal kitchen design? With Mary Jo Peterson and her contribution to this industry, we've been talking about it, but is it sticking? Do consumer generations think about it and acknowledge about it? And then the time spent in the kitchen. Are they there or are they out and about? You know, where is the kitchen in this new normal and this new world? We also wanted to know what are the top three kitchen extras? Through our research at Mas Masco Cabinetry, we often hunt excuse me, we oftentimes hear from the consumer that they have regrets at the end because they're the smartest at the end, right? They've gone through all the pain points in the process and they say, I wish I would have, if only I had known. And so to know those top three things that they're looking for now equips you with the information of how you can move through and offer them those upgrades and those offerings without waiting and having that regret later on. We also wanted to focus on the layout. And this is something actually dear to my heart as a designer, where I'm uncovering and looking at the kitchen layout and how it can be shaped and created to facilitate generational living. And so this study is just a beginning with Masco Cabinetry. We intend to do a lot more research and connect and convey to make sure we all move through and learn from each other and that you are having individual experiences that we can learn from as well as we like to share what we have learned as well. And then how suitable are the homes today for children? Getting back to that generational aspect. So our key finding number one, it was validated that homeowners may not have the home they really need. Now that means they're in tune and aware of what they need more than ever. And they're recognizing they can see the path more with this education we've been talking about as consumers. That's actually good for us. I know they're not acting and responding as much on it right now with the drop in the market, but this is an awareness that will continue to grow as the market is getting better and better. In fact, 24% of homeowners age 18 to 65 indicated that they are living in a multi-generational house. Three out of four acknowledge that from the study. Yet they also acknowledge that their house is not very flexible, accessible, uh, you know, the mobile aspects, it's pretty fixed. So they're aware as consumers, we're the source and the path as the experts of how to solve that for them. Key finding number two, Gen X homeowners are staying in place. It's not a perception. They voted that that's their intention. They're busy advancing their careers. They're busy with the children. Remember, one may be working at home, one may be outside. Their focus is that family and that time. The kitchen's very important, but it's not about all the move and change. They've seen the results of debt and a home and the market flip. They're going to be focused on paying down that debt and then changing the floor plan of the house they're in to accommodate their interests and needs. 63% of baby boomers and nearly half, 49% of Gen X homeowners said they plan to stay in their current home over the next five to 10 years. That is a shift. It used to be five to seven years I'm planning to move. That's pretty interesting. This one's a fun one. And it was a great one to trigger for us. Would you believe dog food may be important than wine? How many here have pets? Okay, quite a few of us, right? I personally have a dog. 22% of all the homeowners responded to our survey feel that a place for Fido, feeding the pet and care and engaging with their pets is more important and one of the top three extras for a kitchen. Only 10% were looking for wine storage. So double is looking for pet relationship with their kitchens. Now that could be done simply with a, a standard lower price cabinet elevated underneath the countertop to make a footprint area for the feeding bowl and the water. Could be that pull out trash can that you could store the dog food or a push out item that you can have it come in and come out You know when you need to feed and when you don't. But what's really been proven out of this, the pets are family members. And they, there are some questions you can ask in your interview. You may not see the animal, but ask, what is your relationship? Are you feeding and caring for them in the laundry room? Or is a kitchen the place you want to have them engaged? I know my dog is always with me in the kitchen. 
Number four, multitasking requires multifunctional spaces. Remember, we talk about Gen Y as a very multitasking group. And so having multiple centers or areas within the kitchen can facilitate that more. This kitchen design is actually a great example to share and show about that with a lowered conversation area, separating the heavy work center activities to encourage conversation or food display. Very intentional by design, but when you look at that, you first don't think about that. So we intend to work with the cabinetry and the design and the consumer moving forward to learn more of these nuances to provide offerings, ideas, and solutions so that you as experts and together in the industry, we can stay up with the movement of the consumer. Key finding number four, on a typical day, Gen Y spends more time entertaining and watching TV, using the computer, hanging out around the kitchen than the baby boomer or Gen X. Well, Gen X out and about, right? I was thinking it was Gen Y. We hear about them being in urban places and going out and, well, really, they're using their kitchen as their central command center as that hub of the family, of course, with Wi-Fi and the flexibility bill paying or friends or socializing or preparing a meal. The kitchen is a very important place, more so than the boomer and Gen X. That's not to say that the other generations don't feel that way, but more so from the study's finding as to Gen Y. Number five, multi-generational homes are on the rise. So that was confirmed. It's not just a stereotype or a, or a perception. 40%, although focused on their own lives, Gen Y embraces the concept of multi-generational -gener living. 40% of Gen Y homeowners said that they expect their parents to live with them in the future. That's pretty exciting. That's also a compliment to how Y was brought along and loved and cherished and nurtured, and it all paid off where they're not trying to run away from their parents. They think they're kind of cool and I'd like to hang out, and that may be the other side they haven't left home yet, but that'll all work out in time. <laughs> but the good news, the payoff in the end, they're already thinking, I better look out for mom and dad or have a place for them to join me. So as they shape their future, they'll consider that, even for just visits. It won't be a forgotten part and piece where I'd say more the, the boomers were in that mindset of not even thinking about that, or why is aware and in touch and reported through this study. Key finding number six, do sweat the small stuff. That's where we really shine. Our industry is detail layered, and that's where we're experts. And so we, as kitchen and bath professionals and architects, can add those details and make a difference for the consumer who's going to the internet, learning and seeking information, but still needs to pull it together and have that completion and connection. This photo is a great example of some of the detail aspects. Raising the dishwasher, for an older person or a boomer, that just makes sense. Now I don't have to bend down and, and it comes to me. But also for Gen Y, they'll look at that and say, isn't this cool? I never thought about this. I didn't have this in my home. So it really works on both sides. So I encourage you in your brick and mortar environments and your online virtual experience to have great photography to show and, and let them experience the possibilities they can incorporate in their home. Key finding number six, the top three kitchen extras for the home, homeowners of generational groups. Number one, hiding those appliances. Gen Y certainly doesn't like clutter. They like it pretty clean, so having a place to tuck things away. With the new inventions with cabinetry, where the full door style can actually cover that open space and not have to rely on a timbre door with the visual lines. Great design solutions, but allow that counter to be more clean and uncluttered. The second one, Consumers acknowledged bulk food storage, the purchasing and shopping habits of that movement, as well as all the stuff they have under the sink. And there's chemicals under the sink, so a spill could really affect their investment. So they acknowledged through the study that they know that that's a problem area or a potential problem area. And then as they buy bulk products to save money, where do they put everything? And in fact, are they, you know, buying the big toilet paper for the saving, but then they have to break it up and put it in multiple places. This will even expand opportunities for other areas in the home. Number three, waste and recycling areas. As Gen Y is concerned about the world and the environment, from a growth center to composting to also segregating the trash, something that simple can make it more efficient and they'll feel good about what they're doing to give back to the world. 
Number seven, our key finding is the best floor plans are open for interpretation. So that stereotype or perception of the opening up of the home was voted highly by all generations to make sure that the, the home and the kitchen space is a great environment. In fact, the dining room is almost going away. In my travels at Trend Researching and Tracking, for example, at High Point, they report that not all suites of dining room sets include a dining room cabinet. They're not being purchased. They're not being used. That additional space could be how they reshape their home interiors to bring that space into the kitchen design. If it's a gallery, it could be taking away a certain area to open it up a little bit. 87% of all homeowners would incorporate a semi-open or completely open floor plan if they could. That's good. That's good for our industry. There's a lot of homes out there that haven't been touched in a while that they're going to be ripe for remodeling, which is right up our alley. 92% of Gen Y said they expect an open floor plan. They've lived in open areas. They've been experienced in those environments. Their TV shows saw, saw hanging out in a larger space. They'll look to bring that loft living at home, even if they move out farther for that patch of land for the kids as they evolve. So open floor plans are an important key and a great benefit for us all. So when you look at the Masco Cabinetry Gen Shift Study 2011, why should we care? I want to give you some summation as to what we learned and how it's great for our future. The new normal has shifted attitudes and behaviors. OK, now we know it. We've said it. What can we do about it? And this is where there's opportunities. The collision of these social, economic, and generational factors will impact kitchen design. Another good news. Designer awareness will lead to the success. How many here are involved at all in your business with social media yet? Okay, that's great. I'm just getting started. I'm going to do a lot more, but I invite you to get into the conversation of the next consumer group. And as I stated tomorrow, I will definitely share a lot more of that information of how we can transition from the old selling way to the new necessary selling way. The kitchen is still the heart of the home and the most important room for homeowners. And as that open floor plan occurs, that's even more critical that the cabinetry and the appliances and the selections relate and have good sight lines and visibility from multiple areas of the home. It's the linchpin of the entire home design. And that sums it up as a high level. Look for us at Masco Cabinetry to do more research and share that with you. I hope I've helped. Open your thinking. Any questions? <laughs> Do we have any questions for Sarah? Yes, sir. Eric. Uh, the gentleman's asking, and he's not my PR agency, I promise, if there are any more presentations. And I'm actually excited about tomorrow. I know probably for people who've been here a while, you may not be around. But 9.30 in room 110, I have an hour presentation, and my company is been over the moon in supporting me with this presentation. I have videos of Gen Y consumers to illustrate the points I'm going to make. In fact, about two years ago, I was like, wow, what has happened to our industry? What's, what's happening? You know, where's it going to go? And I've been concerned. So I've been out in the market. I've been interviewing. I've been connecting. People have been whispering in my ear and saying, here's what I think. And I believe I do have a key that will help us all move forward. And that's really what we need. We need to turn, put the key in, get it turned on, and start connecting. I do believe there's a generational separation right now that's polite. You know, in the old times when, you know, you're wearing your hair along, get it cut. You know, it's not that kind of an experience. It's the fact that, you know, they don't want their mother's stuff. They want their stuff. And if we're not prepared to interact and engage in their way, we're going to miss each other. So I want to make sure we get that next big boom. So tomorrow is the next step, and then look for more things through social spaces in your local chapter for NKBA. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, Generation Y, is there any specifics, uh, uh, like stylistically, oh. you know? Um, that, uh, OK, I didn't pay you, right? No. 
His question is, with Gen Y, is there anything stylistically about their interest? This first program I'm doing tomorrow, I definitely talk about style is important and it's different. Clean lines, uncluttered, aesthetics, natural materials, authentic, has a story. But I want to take it to the next step because your showrooms need to be relevant. If you don't have a display in your store today for Gen Y, please leave the show and go home and think about it with your team to make sure you have at least one that they can see themselves in and think it's wonderful to purchase. Most of the showrooms I'm vis visiting nationally don't have this today. One display at least. And the style will be my next evolution. I'm in the study phase right now. There are certain colors. It's not all the selections of the boomer. They don't need as much. They need us to position it and package it and arrange it and be ready as they probably already picked it out before they come in the door and be able to reflect back. Yes. Okay. Outside the kitchen, what is the biggest surprise and trend? The living room's coming into the kitchen. Now, not the old living room of our matures, but the experience aspect, that TV. Look for that TV to maybe be over the refrigerator, to be on the sidewall as you enter so that you can be at the island. You know, imagine the kitchen even here. Or in this example, this Marilot kitchen. You know, seeing the kitchen, I'm cooking, I want to look at the recipes, check my Facebook. Technology and experience is going to come into the kitchen and soft seating to hang out in the kitchen and probably p play we about here and grab a snack. <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you so much for coming here. And I want to acknowledge NKBA and the KBIS. Excuse me, one more. You said the dining room is disappearing. Yeah. What's replacing it? That's space. Okay. That's space right? The comment is the dining room is disappearing. And that's what the furniture industry for sure is confirming. They're not even making dining room suites every time because they're not being purchased. Sometimes that space is becoming a home office or not even a home office anymore. It's a communal connecting where you can have two or three stations. You know, how many computers do people now have? It used to be one. Probably everyone has their own now, and then now it walks with them. You know, and then you got to have a place to kind of plug in and store it. Even though we have wireless, there's still a lot of wires out there. And then a place to kind of unplug. And I think that space will be borrowed and reincorporated. It, it may be uh, definitely part of the kitchen. Excuse me? So what did your research show about great rooms? A combination of the kitchen, the living room, and the dining room area all in one. OK, the question is about great rooms and the kitchen dining room as their interrelationship. The great room's been emerging. It's been strong. It really built the success of the island because it was a center point. Okay, and that's still going to continue, but that's more the newer homes. There's a lot of home, homes out there, and Gen Y is going to be ripe to purchase them that don't have all those features. So they may take that dining room and make it that great room. Or they may then take the living room and punch a hole in a wall to extend or cut the wall back. Uh, one of our associates who's, who's relocated and now doing her own kitchen, she, t she put a wall in at the stairs to not make it so open, to make a great room right next to the kitchen by walling off the room on one end to open it up on the other end. Reshaping the home, she then needed a new kitchen. Did that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this today. I look forward to, hopefully you can come by tomorrow, learn about Gen Y. They're the ticket. <laughs> Thank you again, Sarah.